UK, can you hear me? We want to talk about our new music. We don't want to be shady, man. Yeah, I've got them for five more minutes, so we've got to talk about music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so what you... you I mean, is there a problem? You, you're not no, there's not the a problem, but they just addressed no, we just it, and we have five minutes about. left. So if we're not going to talk about new music that comes out in 10 days, we've got to move into that. Well, of course, that's why we're doing, that's the whole reason why we're doing the interview. I mean, I could not have been more supportive with Fifth Harmony for the entire career of the band. I know, it's just a time thing. But so obviously if, this was a huge news. The rest news of the questions are still going to be about something that isn't related to the new music. We're going to run out of time, and I'd like to give them the opportunity to talk about the new music. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Welcome to Bizarre Life. I'm Dan Wooten, and this week's guests are Fifth Harmony. Now, I've been a huge fan of Simon Cowell's girl group ever since they burst onto the scene on the US version of The X Factor. I was the first to give them a big press push in the UK. They've guest edited my bizarre column in The Sun. They've even performed one of my Sun gigs. Now, all of that was while Camila Cabello was still a member of the band. She left late last year in what could only be described as one of the most acrimonious splits in pop. There were all sorts of allegations flying. Now, since then, I've met up with Camila in the UK. She's been into the office. She took over my Instagram account. I asked her about why she left Fifth Harmony. She's given various interviews about it. I hadn't seen the girls since then. So it was obviously very clear to me that I was going to have to ask them about the circumstances around why Camila left the band. At the end of the day, guys, I'm a journalist. I know that is what you guys want to know. And I don't play by the rules where certain subjects are banned on this podcast because it's just not what I've ever got, what I ever got into journalism to do, to be honest. So just to be clear, because while you're going to hear what happens, it at is at times slightly uncomfortable. I just want to be absolutely clear that I had got it all approved before we started the recording of this podcast that I would be asking the current members of Fifth Harmony about Camila and the circumstances behind her departure from the band. Now, as you'll hear, the current members of Fifth Harmony weren't too happy to talk about it. The voice that you might hear from Los Angeles is their PR stepping in and trying to get me to move on from the topic. I just want to be honest with you. I want to put it all out there. I still absolutely love the girls, huge fan of their music, and I know it's been a difficult time for them. Please let me know what you think. Fifth Harmony, welcome to Bizarre Life. It is so great to have you again. We may not be face to face, but I've been looking forward to speaking to you guys for a long time because you know how much I've been desperate for new Fifth Harmony music. Oh, and it's finally coming. <laughs> I've obviously loved the songs, but I'm talking the album, which is self-titled mm-hmm. Out a Week when this podcast comes out. So it's very close. But of course, girls, so much has gone on since I last saw you because you were down a member. There are four of you now and you're decided to carry on, which I think is a really great thing to do because, of course, your Fifth Harmony fans are still there. Absolutely. And you were obviously at your peak. And you were at your peak when Camila decided to leave. So talk me about that. that. I don't know about that. Wait for it. (laughs) Well, as in you were on a high, you were on a rise. I mean, hopefully there is much (laughs) more to come. But tell me about that decision to keep going, because did you ever think, actually, this is the time to call it a day? Honestly, um, you know, just the respect and love that we have for each other and just considering how hard we've worked these last four to five years, we knew that, you know, that wasn't it. And I remember in my heart, like, we were actually really nervous. We were scared. It was definitely a hard time, especially at the top of this year. But, you know, our fans, they were so loyal. They were dedicated. They were there for us. And that time, which felt like just hell, honestly. And um, we have each other, and we just knew that. That wasn't it for us. I kept saying, I know the mm-hmm. conversation, like we were Same. debating yes. and, and going back and forth. I think we were actually, 
We um, all knew. Yeah, we all knew in our hearts that there was something greater than what we had created. And honestly, I feel like we're at our peak right now. Like we have so many great things to be blessed for. It's kind of like one thing right after the other, especially at the top of the Amen. year with People's Choice Awards. Yeah. We actually won and it was just Winners. Radio Disney. Radio Disney. I Heart Radio Teen, Teen Choice. Choice Awards. Now we have the VMAs. VMAs. What? It's like we're on a roll. This is the best Thank you, Jesus. part of our careers. Yeah. It's and Ultimate guys, fans. there's a great track record in the UK of big pop bands continuing when original members leave. I mean, I will point you to the Spice Girls, Take That, Westlife and Boyzone, who all went on to have huge hits in a very, very enduring, lengthy career without original members. So there is a track record that proves you can do it and right. get stronger. Yes. Absolutely. We're so excited. We have so much ahead of us. And, you know, like you said, we have our album dropping in a week, yeah. which is so <laughs> surreal. It's like oh literally, I know, right? It's literally like our baby. And we're so like over the moon for people to hear. But at the same time, right, we've got to be honest about this. When someone leaves a group, obviously it's tough because you are like a little family and there's it's obviously always going to be difficult for everyone and Camila has obviously been on a publicity drive herself and there was a bit of war of words initially so what's your message about what went on then because she seemed to say that she'd be very been very upfront and honest about you guys about why with you guys about why she wanted to leave but you guys said those conversations actually hadn't taken place yeah well right now we're really focused on each other we're so excited in the now and we have so much to look forward to so that's kind of where we're at right now and she she also said that she was uncomfortable being sexualized within the band. How difficult was that for you guys to hear? Um, well, I mean, we know how hard we've worked. We know how our choreography, you know, makes us feel and how empowered we feel when Sean gives us, you know, our choreo. And, you know, we know who we are. And then also it's kind of like hard. We have, you know, our voices, which are, incredible and kind of surpass anything else um but yeah i mean are you watching yeah we feel confident we feel comfortable mm. yeah and there's our music never is... been a, a, a moment for me personally this is normani that i felt like i was neglecting myself me neither. or whoever it is that i know that i am so i feel i feel really confident and we're performers at the end of the day you know and we love being on stage and i'm pretty sure everyone kind of in the music industry touches upon that sexual context one way or another one way or another <laughs> these days when you when you have a bit of a breakup on social media you always end up unfollowing each other which happened here do yeah, you think though that one day you guys will be able to be friends again because i have them for five more minutes like what is this <laughs> uk can you guys hear me mm -hmm. can i hear you yeah I'm hitting the... UK, can you hear me? We want to talk about our new music. We don't want to be shady, man. Yeah, I've got them for five more minutes, so we've got to talk about music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so what you, you... I mean, is there a problem? You, you're not no, there's not the a problem, but they just addressed no, we just it, and we have five minutes about. left, so if we're not going to talk about new music that comes out in 10 days, we've got to move into that. Well, of course, that's why we're doing, that's the whole reason why we're doing the interview. I mean, I could not have been more supportive with Fifth Harmony for the entire career of the band. I know, it's just a time thing. But so obviously this was a huge The rest news of the story. questions are still going to be about something that isn't related to the new music. We're going to run out of time. And I'd like to give them the opportunity to talk about the new music. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, what would you like to say about the new music, guys? Well, we have been working so hard um, since the top of the year on our new music. We've literally put our blood, sweat, and tears into it. All of our emotions and experiences, this is all coming from us. We've, we've co-written more than half of our album, which is something we're so proud of. We're so involved, and that's something that we want people to know, that you know we have our voices and our opinions, and we're using them, and we want to encourage people to use theirs as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we... <laughs> And I think also the direction we're going with this time around, we're all so comfortable with and so happy because mm -hmm. we were the ones to, you know, um, discover it ourselves <laughs> and able to create it. So there's definitely like some cool jams in there and some some songs that you just feel like you can just sit in your room and cry to. And it just speaks volumes of that we are singer-songwriters and we took, the, took a chance. And our label also, they 
trusted us to step into the booth and take the courage to step in there and speak from the heart. And thanks to them, we actually have the opportunity to do so. And that's what you're going to hear. And I know our fans, like we just dropped a song called Angel yes. um, by Skrillex and Pooh Bear. And with that song, it's it's so powerful and not to us and to those that can totally relate. Like, who said I was an angel? You're not always going to be somebody sweet. There's times where you're going to step up for yourself and, you know, um, you just step up for yourself and be confident and tell them that I'm not always going to be sweet. It's an amazing song. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. It's one of our favorite ones. One of, definitely one of our favorites. I know it must be tough to um, to answer questions about Camilla and Evening, but I just have to, obviously, you know me, I'm always going to put the questions, it's what people want to know, and uh, and. I'm always an honest broker on that front, so I hope you understand broke. why I had to ask. Well, thanks for working with us on, you know, the fact that we wanted to move forward. We appreciate that. Ali, hello. You're my first member of Fifth Harmony. So what we're doing today, right, is we've got five minutes with each 5H lady. So there's a I lot to that. pack in. Oh, yes. Let's do it. I'm so excited because I actually heard some of your um, interview or your po- your podcast with um, Simon. Wasn't it good? It was so great. I learned like more about Simon in that interview. <laughs> it was really nice. So I, I'm excited to be here. So you were following in his footsteps, actually. And <laughs> yes, I believe I you guys actually Simon. had a night with Simon playing your new album. Is that right? We did. Um, Yeah, a few months ago, we were at his house and we um, recorded so many different records. We were kind of in the Um. middle, near the end of our um, creation. And we played him our album and he was so excited and so um, impressed. He gave us a standing ovation. It was (laughs) so amazing. He, He had us over, we had dinner. And we just talked about our journey and our um, process creating this album. And obviously, he heard the record. And it was so incredible. He has such tremendous support for us. And um, we adore him. He's really incredible. And it has been quite a journey. When I think of the first time we met when we were sailing down the River Thames in London all of those years ago. And you guys have been through so much. There's been so much change. And of Mm -hmm. course, this is your first album now as a four piece. So how did the process on this album change? And interestingly, you just went self-titled this time, just for Harmony. Yeah. Yes, um, this process around we we talked to our label and first of all to each other, and we said we have to be um, we have to write in this album. We have to have um, some really 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 strong involvement in this project, and um, so we talked to our label and our A and R Chris Anacute. Um, he had a conversation with us and he said, listen, I, I believe in you girls. I, I love you girls. You are so talented and you, you have, we know you have amazing songwriting mm. skills and, and musical skills that we're, we're going to involve you um, in creating this album. And um, we went there and the process has been really incredible. For example, we, we, um, when we write with each other, we split into pairs. So two go in one room yes. and then two go in another room. And we get together with the producer and the other songwriter and we just talk about life or talk about what the track is saying to us and how it inspires us. And then we start writing, you know, for example, um, for one of the songs, um, Messy, that Normani and I did, we were... We did that with Dream Lab. We went in and we talked about our feelings and we heard the track. We got inspired and and we just let everything out in that room and had so many ideas flowing for hours and hours. And it was a beautiful process. And then, you know, we made that song, which is one of our faves. And Ali, you had a horrible experience in Mexico last year. Is this right? (laughs) You were attacked (laughs) twice by fans, once at the airport and once on stage. What happened? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that that, that was crazy. Um, So we were in Mexico and one incident was we were at the airport. We were going, um, you know, to our car. We just had landed and there was so many fans outside waiting for us. And we were on our way, you know, saying hi to everybody. And there's this... um, this person, this girl who, um, you know, 
gra- reaches out to me and is like, hey, can I can I hug? T- can I take a selfie? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. And then it just <laughs> spirals out of control, and she just grabs me and like hugs me super tight, but it, like kind of thrusts me um, all over the so place. So it was becoming and unsafe. Up, yes. And I, I got like tackled to the ground. It was this whole thing. And then um, <laughs> a second time, literally the day afterwards, we had um, a performance and on stage, it was our last number, um, a fan came, I don't know how this happened, but a fan came on stage. And I thought at first he was maybe, you know, a security guard's friend or whatever. So I was like, oh, hi, and I hugged him. <laughs> and then I realized he was like, oh, give me super tight and he wouldn't <laughs> let go. And then I was like, oh, okay, I maybe should uh, pull away for a little bit. And then a security guard came and like got him. But Slightly terrifying though. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was scary in the moment because so many like, Things were processing, and, I, and and it was it just all happened so quickly, but um it came out of love, which I will say, which was nice. But it was yeah, it was aggressive. <laughs> and what was this? What was this? Just finally, you were given two right feet in a billboard <laughs> photo shoot. Oh my what God. happened there? I don't know <laughs> what happened, um, but all of a sudden I, I wake up one morning and see that um, my two right feet have appeared <laughs> and it's going all over the internet. It goes viral. Um, it was so funny. We, we looked at that and we were just laughing so hard. We're like, wait, what? How did this even happen? Um, I guess, you know, the world now knows that I have two right feet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, our five minutes starts now. And I have to say, I'm a bit scared about fitting everything in with you for five minutes because, boy, there's been so much going on since I last I saw you. A lot. <laughs> for real. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have to do this quick fire, I think. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's try. Exactly. Let's get it. <laughs> so, first up, uh, you have taken a very admirable stand, in my opinion, um, against Donald Trump uh, last year. Thank you. And Given what you've seen over the last week, you must feel Hmm. even more proud about having done that now. Yeah, honestly. I mean, since I feel proud about it since the second he decided he was going to run for the seat of the president of the United States. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand how America as a country saw that man and everything he stood Mm. stood for and everything that he said and all of the different things that he has you know, slowly but surely started to take back out of the American people. I just feel like it's kind of just disgusting that we're even having conversations like this and having to fight for things that, you know, we were taught in school were done. You know what I mean? It's just, it's really a lot to me. So I'm, I'm grateful, though, that the response of the American people has been so positive and so inclusive and unified and that we're all very much like the majority of us are very much on the same team of just this is not Mm. what we're doing Mm. in our country i'm sorry sir and that open letter actually earned you the celebrity of the year prize at the british lgbt awards because you obviously spoke Mm. about your bisexuality now lauren i've always had my theory that i think we're all a little bit bisexual to be Yo, totally honest. I'm with you. Okay, so my theory is the spectrum. There's Absolutely. There's a spectrum of sexuality. Yes. There's straight people and there's super gay people and yes. then there's everybody in between and everybody's a little bit of something. Yeah, so I because think I'm probably... Because sexuality is fluid. Like, Absolutely. Oh. So I'm probably about 95% gay. Okay. Uh, but where yeah. would you put yourself on the spectrum? Um... I don't know. I I honestly like I fall in love with souls and I don't really even see anything but that, to be honest. So I'm everywhere on the spectrum, in my opinion. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. You're everywhere. Yeah, Um, I'm everywhere. I'm just a soul that's floating around here on Earth. (laughs) But is it true that you are currently dating a certain Thai dollar sign? (laughs) Is it true? Yeah. Um, I mean, no, we're just we're just. You know what I mean? Like, You're just close know, friends? We're just vibing. We're just Or a vibing, little bit more man. than like, that. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to talk about that. You obviously worked <laughs> with him. Yeah. No, we did work with him on um, on Work From Home, which was our like biggest hit. So I'm super grateful to him. He's such a talent and he's such a great guy. So I'm grateful to know him. The only member of the band potentially not on the market at the moment, Lauren, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you also got some headlines um, in December, Lauren, 
when you These were headlines, arrested um, on possession <laughs> of drugs. You were caught with a little bit of marijuana, I think, at an airport yeah. in Washington, D.C. Tell me about oh, that wow. experience. Um, can I not? Why not? <laughs> because it's a... Well, I mean, I've moved on from it. Yeah, <clears> of <throat> A thousand course. percent. But, I mean, yeah, it was an accident, obviously, and I didn't get... Arrest. I didn't get arrested, though. Clarification. Yeah, there was basically <laughs> like a citation. some type of misdemeanor citation. You had to miss the. You basically couldn't just get on the plane. Is that right? I, I was actually just a little bit late to the mm. gate, and they wouldn't let me Got on. It. But I mean, a lot of yeah. artists over time, through the decades, dating right back to Bob Marley, to many merit, many current stars of the charts, have been quite open about the use of marijuana and how it can help mm. the creative process. Are you in that camp, or was this just? A mistake. Um, I mean, Let's move on to the next question. We're not going to get into it. Yeah, for the sake of just like I'm in a, I'm still in a group, you know. So I'm just, I want to protect that. So just, mm. can we move on? Let's yeah. go to the next question, Dan. We only Thank have a couple you. minutes, and I want to get you the group. Yes, absolutely. And the album, Lauren, you must be very, very excited for us to all hear it. Incredibly excited, honestly. It's. Definitely what I'm here to talk about. Um, but yeah, I love all of the music. We've been so creatively involved this time around with everything from the music to the videos to the to the creatives for everything that's going on. We're just so excited and so invested in this project. And we're really excited for people to hear it because we feel so strongly about every single song in an individual way for a great reason. So, Well, you know really how much I love the that. last album, so I'm so excited to hear it. But your five minutes is up, Lauren. <laughs> you took You'll it up. You'll be relieved to know. <laughs> Hot seat with Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dinah, your five minutes starts now. We've got a lot to oh, discuss. <laughs> Let's do it. So, first up, you turned 20. Finally, you're no longer a teenager. Oh, man. Well, do you still feel like the baby of the band? I still do, to be honest. <laughs> but it's funny. I feel like I kind of live like two separate lives because I'm way? the oldest back at home. Oh, of course. I'm the oldest of like eight. My mom's expecting another one. <laughs> My and goodness. And when I'm here, I can like, you know, get away with things and play the little baby sister role. Christmas is going to be very expensive for you, Dinah, with all of those presents. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> but anything for my little siblings. So, obviously, you were in the news uh, quite recently for, I love I this, defending Little Mix for their choice oh. of raunchy onstage Aww. outfits. And I love the Little Mix girls. Tell me about that because me it was too. something they were getting a lot of criticism for. It's funny when people kind of like tell us girls that were raunchy on stage like we can totally relate i know they deal with it too so i couldn't help but defend them because it's a little frustrating just to hear that our outfits kind of give people like you know this idea that we are what they call um sluts that's mm. something that i've heard from the beginning of our career mm. and you know what i'll all we're, the, what me and my girls are about is about being confident in yourself. And if you feel like going on stage, dressing up the way you want, then that's all that matters. I don't care what you think of me because I'm wearing this for myself. Did you hear about the comments recently that were made by Sarah Harding, who was a member of a girl band in the UK who called Girls Allowed? Did you know Girls Allowed? No, I don't. So she's in this she's in the celebrity Big Brother house at the moment in the UK. And okay. she and she's had a lot of backlash for this. This was overnight. She actually described Fifth Harmonies as being slutty. And she said, We used wow. to have to do proper dance routines. They just have to do slut drops now and twerk. Now you've got to hit back at that because I think it's <laughs> totally unacceptable, Dinah. Oh, well, does she want some lessons or anything? <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, people always want to learn how to booty pop like Fifth Harmony. So that's kind of like our signature. But shout out to her. Keep keep doing you, girl. I mean, it's an interesting <laughs> I one. I really it's... don't know who this is. No, that's great. That's great. She was in She was in Girls Aloud. They were like a band. Do you remember Cheryl Cole? 
who did the US yes, X Factor group. Sharon. So she was a yeah. member of the band and she's basically gone into the Big Brother house. But interestingly, her bandmate, Nicola Roberts, has come out against her and said that girl bands in the industry and girls in the industry have to stick together. So it must be quite upsetting when you hear someone who's another girl band to criticise you like that. Stick together. I think I saw a photo somewhere. Yeah, she posted it on Instagram, yeah. Huh, interesting. Well, I don't know. I really don't have much to say. (laughs) But I guess the point is, you guys have always been in control of your own image. That's the point, isn't it? No one is telling you, you have to wear this, you have to dance like that. Nope. No one's ever told us, well, you have to wear this because this is the look. Or, you know, I honestly, for myself, I speak for myself, um, I go out there wearing shorts that I feel comfortable in, maybe because my thighs are like my favorite thing about, is my favorite thing about me. Yes, girl. (laughs) <laughs> that's like my favorite part of my body so I'm definitely going to go out there and show some legs because they're fine as hell so and also I mean when you look at it work from home the most viewed music video of the year hey. on YouTube <laughs> so it's working it is working <laughs> I feel like people watched Work From Home mainly because of the hot men that were in there. Well, yeah, that's true. Um, I, that was sort of yeah, me, Yeah, honestly, honest. I would watch it just because of them too, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's the thing, I guess. It's all about now having a concept, though, behind a video. And I have to say, like, you know, you guys do that, don't you? And outfits and individuality, that is all part of the process now for being a pop star. Yeah, and of course, thanks to our team, because what I love so much about us is that, you know, we're so individually different from one another when it comes to style. Totally. So we play off of that, but we still play off of the cohesiveness. Thanks to our team, our styling team and our management, they know who we are individually and they play off of that, but still keep it, keep the, the dynamic, you, you know, the, keeping it um, cohesive for sure. So. Absolutely. I love that. I love that we're all so different because our fans, they relate to us in different ways as well. So, I mean, when the, the chokers came out, Lauren started wearing that, everyone started wearing chokers. I used to love wearing just bomber bombers jackets. And then, you know, Monty's always loving rhinestones. And just it's cool that everybody can relate to everyone's style. You are trendsetters in your own way. And I'm, <laughs> I hate to say it, Dinah, our five minutes is up. Normani is up next. Five minutes. Now, you had a late night. Is that right? Were you partying? We did. We were partying. I mean, I wish we were. But honestly, no, we had a great time because we were with our fans. Um, We had a signing yesterday because our album is coming out on the 25th. And everybody that pre-ordered the album gets a chance to um, get the booklet signed by us. Awesome. And it was really cool because they were all standing outside and it was really cold. Like we actually flew from LA to the Bay Area and I didn't even know that, you know, an hour trip could make such a difference in weather. It was crazy. (laughs) Well, look, it is great (laughs) to have you here. Now you've had a really busy year in all money because is it right that you competed on the US version of Strictly Come Dancing, Dancing with the Stars? did. And you I came did. third. I know. I came in third. And um, it was honestly one of the best experiences of my life. And, you know, before being in Fifth Harmony, I was so used to doing a bunch of different things. And dance was one of my first passions. I actually loved dance before I even got into singing. And um, I just felt like it was my opportunity and chance to get back to myself. And I had the best partner in the world. He's actually one of my closest friends now. Who was that? Um, so it was just the Val Shmukovsky. Oh, yeah. So and it's so great. cool that you were able to do that as a little solo project while still working on the album. I know. It really did mean a lot to me. And then the girls came out to support me. It got a little crazy because during this um, process, we were actually on tour in Asia. So I was traveling back and forth. Like, no way. It was, it was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> the melatonin on the plane really did help me. But the girls <laughs> came out, supported me. They performed for one of my pieces. It was really special. Now, on the UK show, Normani, a lot of people find love on Strictly Come Dancing, okay? Because you're <laughs> so up close and personal with your partner. And often uh-huh. it breaks up relationships as well. But you went on the show single, is that right? And didn't find love? Um, yes, I went on the show single. 
and I came out single. <laughs> Boo to that. <laughs> yeah, so if you have any um, suggestions, help a girl out. <laughs> I have a feeling you were quite in demand. Um, now, oh, my on, goodness. On a much more serious note, Normani, and it's very topical at the moment, obviously you took a break from Twitter last year because you had received some absolutely horrific uh, abuse and you actually went public with this and said it wasn't just cyberbullying you'd actually been racially bullied which seems mm-hmm. in 2017 such a crazy thing but then you look at right. what's going on in America at the moment and you must be incredibly concerned right I mean I definitely am especially with the experience that I had I just feel like you know it's not 40 years ago we're in 2017 and it just it blows my mind that we're in such a awful, hateful state. Um, I think that it's just really about everybody humbling themselves, putting each other in the other person's position and and just recognizing the reality of what's actually going on, you know? I think that it's one thing to kind of try to ignore it and pretend like it's not even there, but, you know, we really have the power to make a difference in our communities. I feel like for so long we've been told that, you know, our voices don't matter, but Mm. I think that it's just about recognizing and and realizing that, you know, it also does affect you, everything that is going on in the world. So even if it's speaking out about something that's important to you or, you know, just building the courage to speak out, I think that that's where we go wrong a lot of the time because people just think that their voices don't matter, but it really does make a difference. Now, I spoke to Ed Sheeran recently and he told me that he had actually had to quit Twitter because of all of the trolling and negativity that he's received. And he's actually left permanently and gone on to Instagram. But you were able to come back. Was that because you feel it's really important to connect with your fans on a platform like that? Honestly, I did. And it was the best thing that I could have done for myself was to step away from social media and just really talk to myself and, I guess, regain my confidence because I was really beaten. We were on tour during this time. I wasn't with my family. My dad, I remember being on FaceTime with him and he just saw how distraught I was. I was literally in tears on the phone and, you know, because he couldn't be there for his baby girl and be there to hold her and support her. It just really broke me to see him in that state. So I definitely do understand, especially being in the public eye and, and growing up in front of People, You know, I was trying to find myself at 15 years old, and yeah. that's actually when I entered the music industry. Very, very tough. So it, it can often be confusing, um, but I definitely do support Ed Sheeran and, and him stepping away from social media, whatever he has to do to take care of himself and his happy state. Normani, your five minutes is up. I can't believe it. Aw, <laughs> damn it. This was good. <laughs> All right, so it's now time for our regular sections on the podcast. So we are kicking off with How Bizarre. What is the most bizarre gift you've received from a fan? We could start with Lauren. Do you want to start there? Or with Dinah? Uh, Dinah. Dinah's gotten better. Crazy gifts. (laughs) Okay, well, we just got back from um, the Bay yesterday. And I received, like, probably, like, eight blankets yesterday because it was so cold and these fans felt bad for us and they were the ones standing in line for hours so they gave me like heaps of blankets and this big old hot cheeto bag Mm. so that's like one of my the most bizarre gifts i've ever been given the hot cheeto bag it was a huge hot (laughs) cheeto bag i've actually never seen that before yeah it was like two cereal bags in in one money could probably fit in that (laughs) and (laughs) ally what is the most bizarre story you have ever read about yourself maybe that i have two right feet (laughs) oh my (laughs) gosh maybe that i have two right feet (laughs) what is the most bizarre party you have attended and who else was there i've been to some i've been to some weird parties me too i went to this warehouse party one time (laughs) and there was nobody else there like celebrity wise but it was just like some interesting kind of people. I saw some some fashion choices I've never seen in my whole life. <laughs> so, Wait, and what is moment. the most bizarre dream you have ever had about another celebrity? I think it was with Leonardo DiCaprio. Wow. I've had I'm many of jealous. Those and, um, what kind of dream was him. this? What happened was with Leonardo DiCaprio and I went to a pizza place and he was actually <laughs> making the pizza in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> In a boat. <laughs> that's quite bizarre. Oh, yeah, that, that's amazing. Quite bizarre. 
And now it's time for Digital Detox. So this is if you had to choose just one of the following things, okay? So one Spotify playlist on repeat for the rest of your life. This one playlist my best friend made me. My, my best friend Brittany made me a What's playlist. What's on it? A bunch of different kinds of songs. I don't... It's like Ooh. jazz songs and... I, Brazilian songs, all kinds of songs. She listens to like techno, electro so- stuff also, so it's like a whole wide That's mix cool. of stuff. I love that. That's dope. One app on your phone. That's a good one. Um, oh, shit. Shoot. <clears throat> Spotify. No, the Apple Music Ooh, app. Netflix. Apple, yeah, Apple Music. Oh, choose another one. I love Let's Apple Music. One. Okay. Um, so yours is Apple Music. Yeah. Money's is Netflix. Oh. Uh, <laughs> or like, HBO oh. Go. <laughs> yeah, I love HBO. Pandora. I love Pandora. Xfinity. Um, what about Tinder? <laughs> no, no, oh, no. We're definitely not on Tinder, Dan. <laughs> Tinder's still on now. <laughs> Are you on Tinder? You're in Tinder? <laughs> you, I think you're. On of Tinder. course I am. <laughs> How's it's it worked awesome. out for you? Oh, terribly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend I it. I don't <laughs> recommend <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. One contact in your WhatsApp. My my mom. Yeah. That makes sense. Perfect this. answer. Perfect answer. Um, one account to follow in your Instagram feed. Rihanna. I was just oh, about to say that. Nana. Nah. I said Yay, it first. That's a good one. Oh, my God. Or this, there's this artist say... called Distorted that I love, and she's so beautiful. Or Cardi B, honestly. Cardi I love Cardi B. B. Oh, my gosh. Cardi yes, B. <laughs> she's so funny. One person you follow on Twitter. Yara Shahidi. Um, I love history and pictures. I think that's really interesting. Awesome. And then finally, one gadget you can't live without. I can't live without my phone, for real. Mm, Does a KitchenAid count? Yeah. Does a KitchenAid count as a gadget? (laughs) I love baking. I I love love KitchenAids. I would have all of them ever created if I could. (laughs) Love it. All right, and it's now shuffle, delete, repeat. So this is a tough one, okay, because it's basically you. I give you three songs and you have to choose which one you would put on shuffle, which one you would delete, and which one you would repeat. All right, okay? cool, cool, cool. So we're going to kick off with Fifth Harmony Bangers. This is going to oh be God. very oh, hard, this okay? This is going to be very hard. Oh so God. first up, <laughs> Worth It. Then you've got work from home. And finally, that's my girl. Wait, wait, let's I think everyone has different opinions. Right. So. No, I would yeah. I or do we have the same opinion? Yeah, we have the same I opinion. think we have the same would opinion. Would we delete I would delete that's, would my delete, my girl. Yeah, that's my girl. We would delete that's delete, my girl. That's my girl. Probably shuffle. <gasps> shuffle, shuffle from, wait, what was it? Yeah, delete. It work from home? Okay, so we would repeat, I would repeat work from home. Lauren, you're too loud in my ear. I would shuffle re- work from home. Um, can you no, 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 no. I would shuffle. Worth it. Shuffle. I would shuffle, shuffle worth it. it. Yeah, I've heard that song so many that's my times. Girl and girls, no, repeat man. work from home. Yeah, repeat work from home. Yeah. Gosh, that's my girl's my favorite. I'm devastated by that. Um, and then we've got Fifth Harmony X Factor performances. Oh okay? my god! So the three options here okay. are oh. <clears throat> anything could happen. Set fire to the rain. And stronger, what doesn't kill you? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a little taller. Doesn't mean I'm lonely when I'm alone. What doesn't kill you makes a fire. Oh, I would yeah. honestly repeat. Hello, hello. I would repeat anything could happen. It was magical. Anything could happen, right. I would repeat. It was magical. I would repeat anything could happen. I would. Did um, he say let it I would repeat. One? I would delete set fire to the rain. Me too. I didn't really okay. like that. And put stronger on shuffle. That makes sense. I, I thought know. anything yeah. could happen was your best as well. And finally, guys, this is our one final challenge. It is the bizarre accent challenge. It is something Ooh. that we get 
everyone on the podcast to do. So Even fun. your boss, Simon Cowell, tried it out oh, last wow. week. And he was very good, actually. So you've got the lyrics, I think, to Down. Oh, is that yeah, right? Yeah, we you're going to gonna do it with Down. And what's going to happen is I'm going to shout out various accents. And, and you've got to transform them? into that accent while you're reading the lyrics to the song. While you're reading it. Okay, let's do it. That's so awesome. who's best at accents? Are you all going to give I'm it a go? Really, I'm really, so really we, could, we could all take I'm, a jab. Yeah. yeah. Let's all take a jab. Really good at accents. Okay. All right. So from the top? Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. Two, three. Because you know I got a temperament. Yeah, French. Got a reputation. Nothing that a little love, love can't fix. Ah. There ain't no kind of situation where well, I wouldn't cross, cross the line for you. FBI interrogation. I would get a German. line for you. you. German. <laughs> Which one is to show? Go, Ali, go, Ali. You show me love. Wait, no, no. That That's Russian. Russian. That is Romanian. That is Romanian. <laughs> Australian. Hey. Me long, down. long as you're holding, holding me down. 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 I'm, I'm going to keep loving you down. 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 Scottish. As long as you're holding me down. 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 I'm, I'm going to keep loving you down. down. Oh, my God. Down. <laughs> down. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be loving you. Welsh. I don't know what that is. Is that? I don't know. Oh, we don't know that one. <laughs> skirt. Skirt, skirt. What about like... Or, uh, Geordie. What? I don't even know. I'm sorry, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> Isn't that or like co- really... Or why don't you just try, why don't you just try a very you... posh English accent to win? As long as you have like bake for. Because baby, baby, you know you how, how to take that cake. cake. And I'm, I'm not the only one you wait for. Because baby, you know that I'm worth that weight. When push comes to shove, you show me love. When push comes to shove, hey, long as you're holding me down. Yeah, well you done. Yeah. You did it. Thank oh, you so awful. much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. So that was Fifth Harmony, an interesting podcast, slightly difficult. They were in Los Angeles. I was in London. They were running about 90 minutes late, not wanting to speak about Camila Cabello, uh, even though I'd said that obviously that's what I was going to ask about because it's such a big deal when a member of a group leaves a group. You sort of need to find out what went on. But as I say, I've been a huge champion of Fifth Harmony ever since they launched. I love their music. I've been rooting for them to succeed and also rooting for Camila Cabello to succeed because I think there's room in the market for all of them. So if you enjoyed the podcast, then please subscribe to my others. Loads of huge names. Ed Sheeran, Celine Dion, Fifth Harmony's boss, Simon Cowell. They're all there just to be subscribed to and listened to for free right now. And make sure that you subscribe to us because that means you'll get the next episode of Bizarre Life as it happens. Please be back with us soon. I'm Dan Wilson, and thank you so much for listening to Bizarre.